from Brookings, South Dakota. Welcome to the FCS playoffs. Today, the number one seed in action. The opponent, the Mercer Bears. Mercer out of Macon, Georgia, a long way from Georgia to South Dakota. Mercer making its first ever playoff appearance. South Dakota State, they are no strangers. The number one seed in this tournament. The Jackrabbits 11-0 on the year. Last week, Mercer with their first ever playoff win in their first ever playoff appearance, 17 to seven over Gardner-Webb to set up this matchup with the number one overall seed. And we welcome you to Dana J. Dykehouse Stadium in Brookings, South Dakota, an absolutely gorgeous Saturday. Taylor McHarg, if you like college football, this is for you. It's gonna be a fantastic atmosphere, and these fans from South Dakota State and this program, they're used to having atmospheres like this and games that matter in the playoffs. The challenge on the other side for Mercer, trying to get that second straight playoff win on the road against the number one seed. 25 straight victories for South Dakota State. They are the reigning national champions, and they've got a ton of experience, especially at the quarterback position. Mark Gronowski has done a lot in his career and is near the top of the record books. Most efficient quarterback in the FCS, completes almost 70% of his passes, and he does everything for this offense. He's got all that experience that you touched on. Everything goes through him, and he is the engine that makes this offense go for the Jackrabbits. And when you look at Mercer, they're really a team that is driven by defense, but if you want to go to the offensive side, you can take a look at Al Wooten, who has been really, really good for them this year. Well, Coach Kronick and this staff talked to us about how the emphasis for this Mercer team is they're going to have to run the football well today, and that starts with Al Wooten. Had 17 touches a week ago. We expect that to increase today. And again, if Mercer has a chance to upset this number one seed, they're going to have to run the football well with Al Wooten. It is cold, but not nearly as cold as it could be. We are in the low to mid 30s. However, the wind very much going to be a factor today. It's blowing out of the south at about 20 miles per hour. It is a sustained win. We talked with Drew Chronic, the head coach at Mercer on the field just a little while ago. He said, if we win the toss, we're certainly going to kick. I just got to figure out which direction. He went wind and his kicker's back to start things off. So we are about to get started with round two of the FCS playoffs from Brookings, South Dakota. That was not what Mercer was looking for in the opening kickoff as it goes out of bounds. Our referee today is Gary Leeper. So from the 35-yard line, this offense for South Dakota State, which has been incredibly efficient this season, it comes onto the field. Second best scoring offense in the Missouri Valley Conference where they went 8-0 this year. Fourth best in the FCS at nearly 38 points per game. And they'll start out through the air, into the wind, deep and over the middle, incomplete. That pass intended for Jaden Yonke. Got a shot play on first day. And right out of the gate, testing this secondary for Mercer. And a nice job by T.J. Moore staying home. Really good coverage. And blankets Jaden Yonke. Go back to what we opened with with Mark Gronowski. Completion percentage at almost 70%. I think that's the piece that has been most impressive when you watch him on tape. He is on time and he's accurate. He is number three in South Dakota State history in passing yards, total offense, and passing touchdowns. 64 career passing touchdowns. On the ground for the first time today. And there's a lot of balance in this offense, an offense for South Dakota State. It goes for over 200 yards per game on the ground, and you see Isaiah Davis. Well, it's all led by this offensive line. When we talked to the staff this week for South Dakota State, they said this offensive line has been fantastic. We lean on them so much. And a lot of that you'll see today running the football, trying to get this to a third and manageable. Third down and four for the Jackrabbits. Certainly would be a win for Mercer if they could force a three and out on the first possession of the ball game. Gronowski to the air. That pass is complete. It will not be a three and out. As Jackson Yankee on the reception. Yes, same last name 
Jaden uh, and Jackson Yonke are twin brothers and two of the best receivers in the history of this program. Uh, and his quarterback, Mark, Mark Gronowski, targets him early and on time, just like we talked about. As soon as Jackson Yonke comes out of his break, the ball's on him, first down, keeps the chains moving, and that's that efficiency that we talked about. They stay on time and on schedule as an offense more often than not. So into Mercer territory for the first time from the 44. Michael Morgan in motion. Play action. And it's complete. Back to Yonke. That's Jackson Yonke, the senior from Madison, South Dakota. Only about half an hour from here. Testing TJ Moore again to the field side. This time play action. Throw that out all the way to the field. Already mentioned it several times. We've only been on air a few minutes. Accurate throw to the field. That's a difficult throw for quarterbacks. Mark Gronowski made it look easy. Mark Gronowski, one of three South Dakota State quarterbacks ever. As you get a look at the season numbers from Yankee, one of three South Dakota State quarterbacks ever with 5,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards. This time it's Isaiah Davis banging it forward down close to another first down. And there's the Missouri Valley Conference co-offensive player of the year along with his quarterback, Gronowski. They shared that award. Jumps out on tape how patient Isaiah Davis is running the football, and you see it here. Pauses, shuffle in the hole, then boom. There's your burst forward. Good run for Isaiah Davis, well over 1,000 yards on his season. And over 4,000 yards in his career. Coming into today's ball game, 4,045 career rushing yards for Isaiah Davis. Empty backfield, and this one is complete to Jaden Yonke. Spins his way, still on his feet, almost to the 10-yard line. Yards after contact that time for Jaden Yonke. That yak, just like you mentioned, for Jaden and his brother, Jackson Yonke. These guys are both 6'3", 210 pounds, difficult to bring down in space. That's another feature of this offense. Get the ball in your playmakers' hands quickly. Let them get that yards after catch. You saw a good example of it there. And Jaden Yonke coming off a career-high performance for both receptions and yards. He had 10 catches for 187 yards in the season finale win against Missouri State. Direct snap this time to Davis. And Davis is wrapped up at the nine-yard line after a short game. It looked like the freshman, Braden Manley, Got his hand in there, caused that fumble. Hey, look at this come off your right side. Watch 90, reach that right hand out. Ball security there for Isaiah Davis. It's not like this was a physical hit at all. You see that ball getting away from him. Jackrabbit's fortunate that Davis got back on that fumble. Michael Morgan lined up to the right of Gronowski. Davis is the tailback. So from the pistol, they go back to Davis on the ground. And he is dropped. Good job right there at the line as Ken Stanley, who's first team all Southern Conference, makes the tackle. And a good job by this Mercer defense. A little bit of bend, but don't break right on this first possession. South Dakota State's done a nice job being on schedule, moving the ball downfield. But this is a critical third down. This would be a win for Mercer. They could get a stop here, force a field goal attempt on the road, in a hostile environment, this would be a big deal, big stop here for Mercer if they could get it. Jaden and Jackson Yonke in the slot at the top of your screen, left side of the formation. Empty backfield. Bernowski has time, now he's pressured. Throws across his body and it's batted away. What a play there by Miles Redding, I think. That's exactly who it was. You nailed it, Richard. Miles Redding reading the quarterback size. As Gronowski works to his right side, two is going to come down. That's a dangerous throw in the red zone from Gronowski. A nice play from Redding, and that's a big stop for Mercer. Really, South Dakota State had been on schedule that entire drive to get yourself off the field with a field goal attempt. Credit to that Mercer defense. So Hunter Dustman on to try a 26-yard field goal. And it is good. Slipped it just inside that right upright for Dustman. That is his 14th make of the year. And the Jackrabbits strike first. Three to nothing, an opening drive field goal in this FCS playoff game.
Ten plays, 56 yards, and a field goal from 26 yards from Hunter Dustman has given South Dakota State an early 3-0 lead after the opening possession of the ball game. Braden Smith and Devron Harper back to receive the kickoff, which will be into about a 20-mile-an-hour win. So this should be a returnable kickoff. Harper, number one, first team All-Southern Conference. And he is a dangerous return man. As Dustman will line it up from the 35 to kick away. It's a knuckleball. And it is returnable from inside the 10. And Harper is walloped at the 20 yard line. A good kick coverage there from South Dakota State. Time for our first look at this Mercer offense led by their quarterback, Carter Peavy, the redshirt sophomore from Lawrenceville, Georgia, and Archer High School. A little over 2,200 yards with 11 touchdowns and three interceptions of this season. Old crowd coming to life with the Jackrabbits defense on the field. And Peavy's going to keep it himself on an option look, and he is popped at the 24 yard line. Big hit. Jason Freeman, get used to hearing that name. One of the best stories on this team was an NAIA All-American transferred in. Not the biggest guy on the field, but watch how violent. When he arrives, boom, Ooh. when he gets there at the point of attack, he announces his presence with authority. You will see 11 all day on defense. Sometimes you'll have players say, you know, I need to get hit once and kind of get going. Well, Carter Peavy has been hit. He should be ready to go. Second down and six. Looking to throw. Pocket collapses around him. No flag. There it comes in from the sideline. It's going to be a face mask on the tackle of Peavy. That is one area that this South Dakota State team struggles. They are a heavily penalized football team. Pass rush off the edge. Mercer very fortunate. This was about to be a sack. Instead, it'll end up being a big play for Mercer. Jared DePriest, so not 52 is who they called that on. It was actually 94 K Tavir. Easy call there, missed by the head referee, but line judge had a better, better angle on it out to the field, got the call correct. So out to almost the 40-yard line after the penalty. Peavy going to keep it, and he'll dump it off to the sideline. Positive gain on first down. Gave him about four there. So some staples of this Mercer offense we've already seen. A lot of pre-snap shifts, moving guys around the offensive line specifically. The other thing, rolling out Carter Peavy, getting him on the edge. They know this South Dakota State front. They are bigger and faster up front than Mercer is. You're going to see them try to move Carter Peavy around to get the keys to the game, stay on schedule, cannot have third and longs. Running back by committee, you'll see several guys touch the football. That last one for South Dakota State, no extra possessions. Try and avoid letting Mercer pick up third downs. Swing pass caught one-handed out of the backfield. A good open field tackle there made by Savion Williamson. But that does keep Mercer on schedule with third and manageable third and three coming up. Yeah, and don't be surprised here if you see Carter Peavy work to his field side. They've moved him, when I say field side, out to the right. They've got more room to work. If he stays in the pocket, may need to leave the running back and tight end in to block up and go full seven-man protection. I've seen it on almost every play. Mercer will do a lot of shifting once they come set at the line of scrimmage. Bell in the backfield, Harper in motion, PV on the run, and he dumps it off to Harper, who's going to try and get there, and he just goes out of bounds a yard short. Looked like he could have kind of initiated the contact and maybe gotten to the stick. He's going to bring up a fourth down and a yard. They get exactly what they want. Devron Harper in space, and I think he loses where he's at on the field. If he cuts it inside there, I think he could get to the first down marker. 
Cronick maybe a little frustrated there. And he sends his punting unit out. Reese Griffith is the punter. He's averaging 37 and a half this year. Tucker Large, ooh, dangerous catch down around the shoestrings, but now he's got some room in the open field, and then Large is dropped at the 25-yard line. Pretty good recovery tackle there by Jordan Sway. Three to nothing, seven and a half to go in the first quarter. Dakota State with a 3 0 lead over Mercer in their second offensive possession coming up. Mercer playing in the FCS playoffs for the first time in school history, right outside of Macon, Georgia, playing the Southern Conference. Got their first ever win in the playoffs last week, a 17 7 victory over Gardner Webb. Drew Cronick, who you see there in his fourth season, 28 and 16 overall, 9 and 3 this year. Movement up front, and that's going to be a penalty, an early false start on South Dakota State. We weren't lying to you about the wind. The wind or the penalties early for South Dakota State, but we talk, you can't tell obviously right now, but going in this direction for South Dakota State is challenging, and that's why you see a lot of the throws underneath outside of the opener where they took the shot over the top. It's going to be difficult to throw the ball and kick the ball going in this direction. On the ground, Amar Johnson. Johnson, the junior from O'Fallon, Missouri. Good shot by Marcus Thompson. Excuse me, Marquez Thompson for 24. A guy that this defensive staff raved about, talked about how much ability he has and for Mercer it is all about creating turnovers as well we'll talk a lot about that today but 28 takeaways over the last eight weeks they had four they created last week against Gardner Webb part of why they've had the success that got them into the FCS playoffs Ranowski looking to throw pocket collapsing around him on the run and he completes it out to the 35, close to the 40-yard line on the reception. That's Amar Johnson, the running back, out of the backfield. Good patience from Gronowski. Mercer just rushing forward. Not a lot of pressure early in this game. Works to his right side, gets it to his running back with an opportunity in space to pick up the first down. And you can see Gronowski make himself an available target. Once he kind of cleared the line of scrimmage and realized that or excuse me, Johnson, Gronowski was in trouble. He just tried to kind of mirror his quarterback. So they pick up the first down, and then back to the ground with Isaiah Davis. Trying to go quick snap. Thought they may have had Mercer jumped off sides. That defensive lineman was able to get back. down from the 38-yard line. Chronic said his defense is leading this team. He's got a good start so far from the defense. They held South Dakota State to three on the opening possession. Makes it to Davis, and now Gronowski just flips it forward. Look at him make the play to Davis, who fights his way out across the 45-yard line. And instead of a sack and lost yardage, a really positive play for the Jackrabbits. That'll drive you crazy if your defensive coordinator, Joel Taylor for Mercer. They bring Richie Coffey from that nickel spot. Gets home. This looks like it's about to be a sack and then a great individual effort from Gronowski. Flip that ball forward. Get it to your guy. And instead of a sack that leads to a third and long, gets it to a third and short. What a veteran play by Gronowski. The junior from Naperville, Illinois. Davis. Be really close. Needed the 48, and I don't think he got there. About a half yard short. Would not surprise me at all if we see this Jackrabbits offense, the way they've run the football, stay on the field. No hesitation at all. Jimmy Rogers, the head coach in his first season. And that is 
a first down for the Jackrabbits. South Dakota State team 25 wins in a row. There's some keys to this team that they try to focus on week in and week out. 100% ball security against this Mercer team, especially with their takeaways. There's an emphasis there. 60% first down efficiency. That means four yards or more. Pick up 50% of your third downs. And then 100% red zone touchdown conversion. We've already seen 0 for 1 there. Had to settle for a field goal on their first trip to the red zone. Overall red zone success this year for South Dakota State has been really good. That's Jackson Yonke knocked off his feet at the 27 yard line, but another first down. I think TJ Moore from the corner spot got lost a little bit. This ends up just being a curl route into the boundary, and they turn Jackson Yonke loose. Easy pitch and catch curl route into the boundary for the first down. In terms of red zone scoring this year, South Dakota State 98 percent. They are now 43 of 44 on the year, but 36 of those touchdowns. Davis on the ground. He is a hard runner. We were visiting yesterday with Zach Luhan, the offensive coordinator for South Dakota State. We were talking to him about some different players. And you ask him about Isaiah Davis. And I've never heard a coach say this before about a player. He goes, he's perfect. He's perfect. That's exactly what he said verbatim. He said, look, I may coach another 30 years, and, and I may never have another guy like Isaiah Davis. Raved about him as a player. Said he's the hardest working guy on this team, how much he means to this Jackrabbits offense. See, over 1,000 yards this year. That's coming into this ball game. Five 100-yard rushing games this season. Gronowski keeping it himself, and that should be enough for the first down. As he is marked at the 17. You know, let's take a look at FCS ranks for this Jackrabbits offense. Top 10 in almost every one of these categories. The big one you mentioned a second ago, Richard, 98% of the time when they get in the red zone, they're coming away with some sort of points. And how many offenses do we see week in and week out in college football? They move the ball down the field, they get in the red area, and then they get stuck. I think that's one of the biggest reasons why they have so much success on the offensive side. That 55% number on third down really stands out as well. So they are once again in the red zone trying to go two for two with points in the early part of this game as Davis cuts it up the field and down to the 10 yard line. I think what stands out in these first two drives for the Mercer defense to me is that they're really in the right spot pretty consistently. You're not seeing any huge chunk plays, but this is slowly methodically moving the ball down the field by South Dakota State. There are very few negative plays. Mercer is going to have to figure out a way to create some tackles for loss, get in the backfield, stop allowing the Jackrabbits to lean forward for that extra yard or two at contact. Gronowski with Davis behind him. He fakes it to Davis. Gronowski looking to run off the left side, but he is run down from behind by Marquez Thomas, who must have been listening to what I had there to say. Go. Got to create a tackle for loss. This is a good job by Marquez Thomas. Staying home, running down the quarterback, giving your defense an opportunity here on third down. And for South Dakota State, facing another trip to the red zone where they come away with just a field goal. Inside a minute to go in this opening quarter, Mercer trying to do what they've already done once, and that's forced the Jackrabbits into a field goal try. Empty backfield as Isaiah Davis Goes to the top of the screen. Gronowski, quarterback draw. He gets down to the 10. He gets close to the 5. That's a first down on the quarterback run for Gronowski on what is likely the final play of this first quarter. And there's a scrum for the ball. The official that immediately came in already said he was down. But how about that effort again from Mark Gronowski? Physicality at the point of contact breaks a tackle and gets some help from his fullback. Like Michael Morgan helped lean him forward, pick up that first down. May not matter from inside the five yard line, but the Jackrabbits will now have the win at their back. 15 minutes in, South Dakota State leads it 3 0. Go, Jack! Here we go, Let's go. A lot of jackets, a lot of gloves, a lot of headgear trying to stay warm on a windy and sunny afternoon in Brookings, South Dakota. South Dakota State, number one overall seed, leading 3-0 and knocking on the door inside the five-yard line. 
with first and goal alongside Taylor McHarg. I'm Richard Cross. Thanks for being with us. This FCS playoff game, Isaiah Davis onto the ground, bulldozes his way into the end zone for a touchdown. And the Jackrabbits an extra point away from making it a 10 nothing game. Took until the second quarter. Jackrabbits finding a way into the end zone. A lot of their production at this point has been on the ground with their bell cow back. Isaiah Davis capped off, running right at you. Hunter Dustman and the extra point are good and that makes it 10 nothing Isaiah Davis with his 12th rushing touchdown of the season as South Dakota State goes in front 10 nothing early in this second quarter. Downtown Brookings, South Dakota. December, Saturday afternoon. There are a lot of years where there would already be snow on the ground. It has been relatively mild so far. I wouldn't bet on it staying that way. Probably not. But everyone since we've been up here has talked about how what how lucky we got with the weather. Wind blows off the tee. Drew Chronic in his fourth season as the head coach at Mercer in Macon, Georgia. He is the father of three boys his wife Amelia he says was his high school sweetheart he's known as in-laws forever in fact he played football growing up for his dad and uh, his in-laws only lived a short distance away where he grew up this is a short kick that's going to be fielded at the 15 chance for a return it's out to the 23 yard line the coach chronic's oldest son Noah has special needs he will be 21 years old on the 26th of December. And so, Noah, we wish you a happy birthday, the 21st birthday coming up. Noah had a stroke at birth and spent the first two weeks of his life in NICU. He has cerebral palsy. And Coach Chronic said he has been an absolute joy. And he gave so much credit to his wife, Amelia, said she quit her job and she has done all of his physical therapy. She says, he says that his wife is the best mother that he has ever seen and then talked about how Noah and his love for football and love for being around the football team but also the care that he requires has made him a better football coach it was a great conversation really enjoyed visiting with him also loved what he said also about his other two boys Isaiah and Eli and that they how much they love their brother and yeah. it really was just a fantastic story and uh, we really appreciated him sharing and opening up opening up with us about his family Second down here for the Mercer offense. Has really got to be careful not to dig themselves too big of a hole, but they are finding themselves in a hole. This was a problem for Mercer a week ago. This bootleg action, they don't get the tight end across. Watch Sam Albee. When he comes across, he's got to get there, try and pick up and slow down the pass rush from Zach Wilson. He doesn't get there on time, ends up being a big sack. But as they go with this bootleg action and get PB out of the pocket, they've got to have some help with the tight end to try and slow down that edge. Is that a scouting report sack there based on a certain and look you just take off absolutely. up Absolutely. When you see that there's any sort of potential play action, that defensive end is going to rush straight up field banking that PV is coming back his direction. PV with an empty set, three down across the front for South Dakota State and a timeout taken by Mercer. 13-31 left in this second quarter with the timeout on the field. We'll take it as well. A long third down for Mercer coming up out of this timeout, trailing 10 nothing to the reigning national champion, South Dakota State, who has won 25 straight games. That is Ty James, preseason All-American, first team All-Conference, Walter Payton watch list for the National Offensive Player of the Year. But really quiet so far today. He and Devron Harper, two electric players in the pass game. Here's Carter Peavy 
who can hurt you with his feet. He had a 75-yard touchdown run on the first play of the game in, uh, against Ole Miss back in the second game of the year. But not this time, not against the Jackrabbits defense. And had a long touchdown run a week ago against Gardner-Webb, but that sack put them too far behind the sticks. South Dakota State able to get off the field, and now watch this punt. Important here for Mercer, already backed up, punting into the wind now to try and flip the field here is Reese Griffith. Tucker Large with his feet right at midfield. Wobbly punt. Large will catch this on the plus side of the field. And so now South Dakota State with the wind at their backs and a 10-0 lead will bring the offense back out onto the field. Two for two in terms of scoring drives. Field goal in the opening possession and then a touchdown. And they have just dominated time of possession in this game. It'll get a little easier to throw the football now with the wind at their back. There's a look at the Mercer defense and defensive coordinator on the left there, Joel Taylor. But for South Dakota State now with the wind at their back, would expect to see them try and test this Mercer secondary a little farther down the field. Griffin Wildey in motion. Play action. There's your shot down the middle of the field, and that ball is incomplete. Jaden Yonke had it in his hands, couldn't haul it in. Had it initially. Credit to, looked like Tavion McCarthy, I believe, in coverage there. Take a look. Oh, excuse me. That's Miles Weston. Good job wrapping around. Ends up, I think, getting that right hand into effect that play. Jaden Yonke not able to come down with the ball. Yonke's been on fire. He's got nine touchdown catches in the last seven games. Second down and 10 after the shot play down the middle of the field on the post. Gronowski going to keep it himself. Not shying away from contact there at the 45-yard line. Going to bring up a third down. We asked, we asked this offensive staff yesterday about Mark Gronowski. What does he like most? They said he loves four verticals and quarterback power, <laughs> which I don't think I've ever gotten that answer ever asking an offensive coordinator, but I think that perfectly describes Gronowski. You've seen a couple shot plays, wants to throw it over the top, he's accurate, and then when they decide they want to run the football with him, he gets his nose in there and gets physical. Isaiah Davis is the back. Morgan in motion. The give is to Davis underneath, and he picks his way across the 40, down to the 39-yard line, and that should be enough. For a Jackrabbits first down. There's that patience again, right, Richard? It's not there initially. You said picks his way for first down, and that's exactly right. If he goes in running full speed right when he gets the touch, probably not much there. Two or three yard gain. Makes that shift to his left, works his way between the tackles. So we get a look at the production from the Yankee twins. Not too far away from Madison High School, Madison, South Dakota. I love Jackson Yankee. He's a student teacher at Brookings Middle School. It's got to be so fun for those kids. I mean, helping out in their class, it's a stud for the South Dakota State team. Davis, well, what vision? I mean, everything is going to the left. He sees the hole, plants that left foot, and gets upfield. Patience, patience, patience. This will be a great look at it. Starts left, has to bend this back to the right, breaks a tackle. I think he's really a complete back, and it's why you may see him drafted late. This is going to be a guy that's going to get a shot in the NFL. Gus Miller, number 50, in the middle of that offensive line. He's the center. You see Davis's numbers so far today. The rushing touchdown at over 50 yards. He was second team all Missouri Valley Conference. But his coaches say, for their money, the best center in FCS football. Shot toward the end zone, incomplete as Michael Morgan tried to make a one-handed catch. But this offensive line, left tackle Garrett Greenfield, first-team all-conference, Mason McCormick at left guard, first-team all-conference, Gus Miller, second-team, Evan Burnson, the right guard, is honorable mention all-conference. And then John O'Brien, the coaches raved about, even though he's the only one of the offensive linemen 
that didn't get postseason recognition. And they said that he absolutely should have. Those two on the left side, Greenfield, McCormick, though, those will be NFL offensive linemen. They're going to get a shot, both the guys on the left side. Second and 10. Change of pace in the backfield as Amar Johnson is into the game, and he fights his way all the way down to the 17-yard line. You know, when we closed out that first quarter, that time of possession for South Dakota State, 12 minutes to just over two minutes on the other side for Mercer, and we're seeing it continue here. Mercer not able to stay on the field. South Dakota State wearing down this defensive unit, staying ahead of the sticks, running the football well, and just wearing on this front seven for the Bears. Ten first downs in the game for South Dakota State compared to just one for Mercer, and that one came via a face mask penalty. Lamar Johnson once again stacked up just across the 15-yard line. And doesn't it just feel like an, it's the attitude right for South Dakota State? Run the football, be physical, be nasty. See 60 right there, Mason McCormick. We pointed that out. We said, man, this guy plays with an edge, and his offensive coordinator, Zach Luan, said, hey, he's got a target sometimes on his too back. Much. Yeah, maybe sometimes too much, but you have to have one of those guys on your offensive line, and Mason McCormick absolutely embodies that. Get a look there at Jimmy Rogers' first season as the head coach. Interesting story for Jimmy Rogers. Ranowski takes a shot toward the end zone, and a flag comes in as Yankee was locked up that time by Tavion McCarthy in coverage and never got his hands off of him. It's physical, and I, it was not great coverage from Tavion McCarthy, but I also think Mark Gronowski bailed out a little bit here. It was not a great throw. Ball is left well inside. Number 20, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. I think they got the number wrong there. Called it on 20, Richie Coffey. It was Tavion McCarthy from the corner spot that number four. Take a look. Trying to throw just a, a fade. Look how far inside that ball is, but too physical outside. It's a pretty easy call. Yeah, Richie Coffey did not do anything wrong there. He was he was kind of chasing on the play, so it was McCarthy. But a first and goal from the two-yard line as South Dakota State tries to extend the lead and make it a three-score game. Movement all over the place up front. John O'Brien, the right tackle that we were talking about just a moment ago. Right side, your right tackled. And a little bit of a flinch. Okay, maybe a little more than a flinch. <laughs> We're well into the play, actually. Two, two, two second head start for O'Brien. So this takes it back out to the seven yard line. This South Dakota State team has been really impressive, and it's not new. They, they finally kicked down the door with the national championship a year ago, but it's the 12th consecutive. FCS playoff appearance. This pass is caught by Jackson Yankee for a touchdown. His fourth touchdown catch of the season. The honorable mention, all Missouri Valley Conference player, the senior from Madison just down the road, makes it a 16-0 game. And it's a staple in their red zone offense. Fake this like it's going to be a slant, and then work this back out for a back shoulder fade. That takes patience and accuracy from your quarterback, Gronowski, and then also a good, disciplined, patient route from Jackson Yankee. And this offense continuing to roll early for the Jackrabbits. So Hunter Dustman's extra point try is good, and it's now 17 to nothing. 8.46 to go in the second quarter. Jackrabbits pitching a shutout, leading it 17 to nothing over the Mercer Bears. Season opener a year ago, Iowa City, 7-3. to three. That's the last time that South Dakota State lost a football game, 25 in a row, including last year's national championship game, in which they boat raced a rival, 45-21, to 21, beat North Dakota State. Nearly 23 points a game, the average margin of victory. 
been a while since they've been tested. Haven't trailed, trailed briefly against North Dakota State, but majority of the back half of their schedule, they have spent in the lead with a big lead. Harper on the return, trying to get to the outside, and he only gets back to the 19-yard line. I don't think we've seen a fair catch on a kickoff in this game yet. Maybe desperation time here for this Mercer offense as they have only one first down in the ball game. And you've got two big time weapons in Devron Harper, who's got 536 yards receiving, and then Ty James, who's a thousand yard receiver with seven touchdown catches on the year. How do you get number one and number 13 involved? You got to manufacture some touches jet sweep, fly sweep, screens. There's some of the pre snap motion and adjusting, shifting that we talked about. Handoff on first down. That's Al Wooten. Had a good first down run out to the 26 yard line. That's a game of seven on first down. Right now they've got Devron Harper out to the field. 13 Ty James in the boundary. Take a look at what this guy has accomplished. Mercer all time ranks all of these in the top three. 3300 receiving yards and Richard you said it exactly right. You've got to figure out a way to get him involved. I think this is a spot on second and short. Maybe try and block seven, seven man protection, take a shot. Carter Peavy keeks it himself. Able to avoid a big hit this time. It goes down at the 30 yard line. That's enough for the first down. Just the second first down of the game for the Bears. Mercer out of the Southern Conference. Eight and three this year, the regular season. Their losses were to Ole Miss in their second week, back on September 2nd. Lost that game against the SEC foe. They also lost at Furman and to Chattanooga. Fresh set of downs. Evie takes a shot down the field. It's underthrown into the wind and incomplete. Trying to hook up with Ty James. Thought he could have gotten rid of this ball a little earlier. Double clutches this, works back to the middle of the field, then goes back outside to Ty James. And just like you said, throwing into the wind, got to try and get that out a little earlier than you would, than you normally would because you're throwing into that 15, 20 mile an hour wind. If you've got a one on one, even if the coverage is good, do you feel good just saying, to my guy, go make a play. To Ty James, you do, absolutely. This is underneath. That's Harper. And he slithers his way out across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Deborah Harper on the catch. And I like that as well. Deborah Harper, stick route, simple completion, try and build some confidence for this passing attack in Carter Peavy. Don't be surprised here with this game already at 17 to nothing. If they get this to a fourth and short, even though they're well in their own territory, if you see Mercer stay on the field. Go across the 40 yard line, almost to the 41. So, on your bird, the tight end is in motion. The handoff is underneath. There is nothing there for Wooten. In fact, he may have lost a yard. That was just gobbled up by the defensive front of South Dakota State. And too slow developing, right? That plays into the hands of South Dakota State, a physical defense that wants to pin their ears back, come downhill. Credit to this Jackrabbits defense getting themselves off the field. And for Mercer on the other side, feels like we've seen their defense on the field the entire game. Another quick possession for this Mercer Bears offense. He's already come off the field, but big number 98, Ryan Van Marl. Boy, he was a mess. Fake punt, that's a first down and more. What a good time for the fake punt call. And the big man making a play, Chris Hill Jr. How about that call? And how about the execution? He looked comfortable with the ball in his hands. That's not the first time that Chris Hill Jr. has run the football. I promise you that. Snap it to an up back. He's got a couple of blockers. You're right. How about it? 6'1, 295, rumbling down the field to pick up the first down. Fifth year senior nose tackle. 
running the football. <laughs> There's some FBS fullbacks that don't run it that well. Harper in motion. It's an end around, a flip to James. He gets a block. It's to the 30. Flag comes in late as Harper goes all the way down to the five yard line. And this one is coming back. It's interesting where this flag came from. It is. Referee Gary Leeper was right behind this play. Watch on the left side of the screen. Devin Free, excuse me, Jason Freeman, number 11. I think they get, get the call right with Nate Howard blocking Jason Freeman in the back. Just thought it was interesting from where that came from. Yeah, it was the official on the side, I guess the side judge, about 20 yards downfield in front of the play, who was kind of looking back at it, that threw that flag. And so instead of first and goal from inside the five yard line, it's back close to midfield on the 10 yard penalty. But, but to your point, it was the right call. It was the right call. And for Mercer, one of the things they talked about, Coach Chronic and this staff talked about look, we're going to give them everything we got. All of our shot plays, all of our trick plays. We're going up to play the number one team in the country. I think the last two, you've seen them relax a little bit, getting into a groove, unfortunate for that penalty, setting them back there. Peavy keeps it. It's not a whole lot there. He picks up two to the 45, maybe the 44-yard line. It's a good job by Dallas being on the corner to the boundary. Looks like there was going to be some wiggle room here for Carter Peavy running the football, but being able to stretch that out. I think that's one of the things for South Dakota State that stood out also. Dyshawn Gales and Dallas Beanham from the corner spot. Really physical. You'll see them get their nose in there and be violent even in the run game, which you don't always see from corners. Tunnel screen look there. And Harper gets it down to the 40. So at least you've got it into a somewhat manageable third down. I like the play design. Use freshman Braden Smith in that motion out to the field. Get everybody's eyes working away out to the field. See 21 go out of the frame, and then you bring the screen back inside. But look how many blue jerseys rally to the football. That team pursuit defense from the Jackrabbits. Third down and 12. Mercer's got to take the ball to the 29-yard line. 0 for 3 on third down so far this afternoon. Harper in motion. Peavy with time. He completes it to Ty James. I beg your pardon, that's not Ty James. That is Parker Roble. And the offense going to stay on the field. Because it, it does you no good here, really, if you punt the ball, right? You're too far, given the wind, out of the range of Reese Griffith to kick the ball. Like this design, we'll see, do they move Carter Peavy out to his left side? Give him the opportunity. If I'm offensive coordinator, Bob Bodine and Drew Cronick, head coach. Move him outside. If it's not there, he can use his legs to pick it up. Fourth down and three for Mercer. They swing it out of the backfield, but a good open field tackle. That was Parker Roble on the catch. Pursuit really, really good by all of those blue jerseys. Isaiah Stalker, the Nebraska transfer. One of the studs of this defense, one of the most athletic linebackers in the Missouri Valley Conference. Really good pursuit, rallies to the football, good open field tackle. 2.31 until the half. South Dakota State leading it 17 to nothing over Mercer. Jackrabbits, they've been methodical offensively. They may have to pick up the pace if they're going to score again before the break. We're back after this. The reigning national champion, South Dakota State Jackrabbits in front, 17-0 over Mercer, who's playing in just its second FCS playoff game ever as Mark Kronowski comes back out. The Missouri Valley Conference has dominated in the FCS playoff. Six bids out of that league, four from the Big Sky, four from the CAA, three this year from the Southern Conference. Drew Cronick told us that he thought there could have been a fourth on the catch, Jaden Yonke trying to run away from people. Finally wrestled down at the 38-yard line. This is so good from Jaden Yonke running that tunnel screen. Lance Wise Jr. Watch zero to the top right. He triggers on this. He recognizes it. Yonke shuttles 
stops his route, catches the ball, flips his hips around and gets vertical. That's so good, patient route running from a veteran guy that's just played a lot of football here for the Jackrabbits. Zach Hines, the tight end, moves over to the right side, back to work on the ground with Isaiah Davis. 12 carries now for Davis for 54 yards. See a little bit of tempo here as we get well under towards that minute and 30 mark in the quarter. South Dakota State with all three timeouts remaining. Gronowski saw nothing. Now he takes off and he's pulled down from behind. Good job on the tackle that time by Marquez Thomas. We've called his name a lot today. Coming out of half, Mercer will have the football. This would be huge for their confidence. No, it won't be points, but if they could get a stop here, avoid another score for the Jackrabbits going into half, the big third down here for Mercer. Thomas has played well the last two games. He had a career-high nine tackles in the first-round playoff win over Gardner-Webb last week. Clock running inside a minute. Jackson Yankee in motion to the slot at the top of the screen. To the air. That is Yankee on the catch. Breaks tackles. Spins his way across the 15, and he's dropped at the 12-yard line. Another big run after the catch by a Yankee. He's hard to bring down, along with his twin brother, Jaden. Hard to bring down at first contact. Right back to the line of scrimmage, South Dakota State leading it 17 to nothing. Gronowski decides to keep it himself, and he'll run out of bounds at the six-yard line. Thought he might try to hit Zach Hines on the back line. That's a good job by your veteran quarterback. Just for a split second, I thought he'd try to pull up and fire that into the back corner of the end zone. And Mercer takes a timeout with 27 seconds until the half. Clock obviously not running, but trying to regroup with this defense and keep the Jackrabbits out of the end zone. It's been about what we expected from South Dakota State. Come out, run the football effectively. Seen a little more of the passing attack in the second quarter when they had the wind at their back, but Regardless, it's been a staple for this offense, running the football well with Isaiah Davis. I think we've seen Mark Gronowski run the ball a little more than maybe we expected. Jimmy Rogers, somewhere in the middle of that huddle, is the head coach in his first season. He played his football here. I asked him yesterday, I said, is there something about South Dakota that keeps drawing you back? He grew up in Chandler, Arizona, went to Hamilton High School, huge high school in the area. He was the Arizona player of the year, but had no offers except from San Diego, or excuse me, South Dakota State. Decided to come here to Brookings and play. After playing, he was a graduate assistant at FAU. On the ground, Isaiah Davis all the way into the end zone. Didn't look like there was a whole lot there that he made it happen. It's another run that looks like it's going to be a one yard gain, no yard gain, tackle for loss. Instead, Isaiah Davis makes a move in the hole, makes somebody miss. Watch this patience and vision. Moves to his right, breaks the tackle, bounces back to the left, spills the guy at the goal line touchdown. That type of vision and his balance at the point of attack is why I think you really will see him get a chance at the next level. Extra point coming. So with Jimmy Rogers, after four years away from South Dakota State, he came back first as a position coach, then as the defensive coordinator. And after the retirement of Coach Stiegelmeyer, legendary head coach here in Brookings a year ago, he was handed the keys to this card. Really feels indebted to this program. And isn't that the story of so many of the guys that he talked about on this team? He went down the list of his roster and started pointing out, not only on his roster now, but in his office, the guys back above his office, NFL jerseys, guys that have played here and gone on to play at the next level. He went down the line of guys that, hey, we were, we were their only offer, or they got one offer late. And he said there's a loyalty factor to this team, and it's part of why these guys play so hard, and you feel it. When you watch them in person and when you watch them on tape, 
there's a, a level of effort, and there's also, if you see why, so few guys hit the portal from this program. They have success, and then they stay because they know they're loyal to the place that gave them their chance. I think he told us there are only five players, scholarship players on this roster, who had more than one scholarship offer out of high school. Touchback. First time we've seen that today. So 21 seconds until the half. South Dakota State will have the football to start the second half. Actually, excuse me, it's Mercer that will have the ball to start the second half. Don't imagine that Mercer's going to do much here. In fact, they are lined up and, and take a knee formation. Carter Peavy does just that. And that will send us to the locker room. There's not a lot of glitz and glamour, not a whole lot of flash to what South Dakota State does. Efficiency is an important word with their program, and that was about as, an efi as efficient a first half as you could have. Top defense in the FCS, one of the top offenses in the FCS, and it's team football, and that's what we saw in that first half, taking care of the football, mostly staying on schedule, and they have ground down Mercer in this first half to build a 24 to nothing first half lead. Second round of the FCS playoffs, and the number one overall seed, the South Dakota State Jackrabbits lead it 24 nothing at the half. When Elsie puts on the headgear every Saturday morning, that is the moment when the day of football can start. Could have never have, have dreamt that it would have become where we are today, where fans every week, that's what they wait for, to see which headgear he's going to put on. I like Ohio State's speed and power, but I question their place kicker and their punter. The headgear tradition started in 1996 at Ohio State. Herb Street was fairly new on the show, and Kirk's wife, Allison, had been an Ohio State cheerleader. He thought I might have some kind of in to try to get Brutus's headgear. They had to do some very high-level, tense negotiations. I'm telling you, it took three or four different back and forth until finally they green-lighted Brutus. I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> Let's just examine the Brutus head. It's a head representing a nut, a two-tone nut. Oh. I like the Buckeyes! So it's ridiculous looking. You can't help but laugh. Hey, 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 hey. And when he sensed that that was an entertaining moment that resonated with fans across the sport, he embraced it and it's become a beloved tradition. Colorado in a big upset! I remember him as a young kid watching college game day and Lee Corso was on there and putting on the headgear. He is college game day. I feel like I've been watching Lee Corso do that since, you know, I was in high school. The different antics he's used and mascots he's used has been pretty incredible. Higher wolf costume, a purple cow! Cow! To this day, I still watch and anticipate to see what he's gonna do. Go Navy, beat Army! Seeing him fire off the guns is pretty funny. My favorite one, we're at Texas, and McConaughey starts wrestling the LSU Tiger head off of LC. There was a little trickle of blood. Katy Perry was incredible. Like, she damn near broke my man's nose, taking the mask I had off of him. I think the, the, the best one might be the, the outtakes. How can you pick against that shit? Throwing out some, some words that might, might needed to be edited. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite memories definitely include live animals. Man, we got a live duck on the set. He's not afraid of gamecocks. <laughs> He's not afraid of alligators. Alligator. He's not afraid of dogs of any kind. That dog <laughs> is beautiful. That dog is ugly. Give me this thing here. I think the best part is when coach does the okie doke, where he grabs one head, gets ready to put it on and then he chucks it to the side and grabs the other one. I'm going 
road, but sweet old Alabama. <laughs> Anytime I'm watching and you don't know, you know, which what he's gonna pick up, that, that's all pretty exciting. Penn State! Give him that hand. Does that mean you're gonna go against your first love, Brutus? Coach Corso is a maestro of the crowd. He can take him on a ride like not many people in the history of television can. Corso <laughs> with the duck. He's always got something ready for the people. And to see him come out as Ben Franklin was just absolutely incredible. I found it, Ben. This is my school. My best moment is when he picked Texas to win the national championship. Tonight, they shocked the entire universe. And all the other guys up there were totally against him. I'm going with Texas Longhorns. Hook up, Texas! <laughs> and then we won. And I've praised Coach for that ever since. There's a time with Bill Murray. We're at Death Valley in Florida State. <laughs> and he comes up, Chief Osceola, and he's dancing, and he's dancing. Oh! And Bill Murray sees that, and he picked Clemson, and he picks him up. <laughs> WWE style. It's chaos everywhere. Somebody that tried to copy that would be like, it would be silly. There's only one person who can do that, Lee Corso. Oh. I think he's been a great ambassador for college football, and has brought some great perspective, but also brought laughs and fun to a game that we have to remember is still supposed to be fun and supposed to be a game. What he's provided to so many households, what he's provided to so many of us as coaches, he put a lot of fun in the game. I just can't thank him enough. <laughs> For Lee Corso to put on that headgear 400 times, it never gets old. It's sincere, it's authentic, it's genuine, it embraces the fans, it embraces the tradition of what makes this sport unlike any other and what makes Lee Corso a college football broadcaster, an icon that's unlike any other who's ever been involved with this sport. And God bless the United States of America! <laughs> the fact that I've got a chance to sit next to you all these years and watch you do your thing and just learn from you. It just taught me so much about this industry, watching you perform and, and the way you did it. There he is. The Kirk Herbstreit Show. We love you so much. You're a piece of gold that we cherish every single week. Four to nothing, our halftime score. South Dakota State leading it over Mercer. South Dakota State, the reigning national champions, winners of 25 in a row, and the number one seed in this year's FCS playoff. Take a look at the bracket. Got games going on this afternoon. You see the scores from last weekend there in the first round on the left side. Villanova with a 45-28 win over Youngstown State, and that means Villanova if this score remains, we'll be traveling here to Brookings next week. Also, Albany with the win over Richmond. Albany will take on the winner of Idaho and Southern Illinois. If Idaho wins that one tonight in the Kibbe Dome, then they will be hosting next week. On the other side of the bracket, Furman leading Chattanooga 20-7 in the third quarter. They are just underway between Montana State and North Dakota State. South Dakota leading it over Sacramento State 24-7. And later this evening, Montana and Delaware will meet up in Missoula. So those are the up-to-date scores for games that are happening today in this second round of the FCS playoffs. We'll get you set for the start of the second half when we come back. Jackrabbits leading it over the Bears. The NCAA FCS championship coverage continues next weekend with quarterfinal coverage across ESPN networks. For more informa uh, information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Our halftime score in Brookings, South Dakota, 24-0. South Dakota State leading it over Mercer. 
South Dakota State got on the board first with a field goal, leading three to nothing. They turned things over to Isaiah Davis, who got his first of two rushing touchdowns. Jackson Yonke into the action. That was a touchdown pass from Gronowski. This was the second of a pair of touchdowns for Isaiah Davis. Uh, it's true to form from what we expected for the most part with South Dakota State. This fake punt from Mercer gave them life in the second quarter. Thought they may be able to capitalize, try Chris and get Hill. some points. Chris, from Hill. Chris Hill Jr., big boy with the ball in his hands. Some missed opportunities also, though, after that fake punt didn't capitalize. That was the first possession of the game. See Coach Chronic obviously upset. And then defense for South Dakota State doing a nice job getting in the backfield, trying to put Carter Peavy quarterback for Mercer off balance. And, and you've seen so much of that team defense swarming to the football. I think if Mercer have a chance here coming out of half to try and get points, but need to get some momentum and at a minimum stay on the field, give their defense a breather between these possessions. Wind continues to blow. You see the first half numbers, 243 total yards, 15 first downs for the Jackrabbits, just three including 0-4 on fourth down, or third down. Well, it's that time of possession here that stands out to me, almost 2-1, to one, pretty close to 2-1 to one in that first half. And Mercer defense, they've spent so much time on the field. Jackrabbits wearing down that front seven of the Bears. Felt like during the second quarter, there was a little bit more of a concerted effort to get the ball to Devon Harper and Ty James. We'll see if they continue that. Coming out of the locker room, Mercer Desperately in need of points. They start things out on the ground with Al Wooten. Wooten had just two carries for six yards in the first half. They just, I'm sorry, Richard, just three possessions in that first half. They had the drive where they converted the fake punt, 11 plays on that drive, but just 19 total plays in that first half. Just did not have very many opportunities. Four-yard game from Wooten on first down. Peavy looking to set something up. Buy some time going back to his left, trying to turn the corner. He'll have positive yardage, but pretty good coverage down the field by the Jackrabbits defense. Trying to hit a throwback to Parker Robel. It came out of the first play of the game with this speed option out to the field. This is the wrinkle off of it. Good job by the Jackrabbits defense staying at home. Setting up again, third down. Mercer trying to avoid a three and out to come out of the second half. Third and three for Mercer. Riding a five game winning streak. It's a reverse. They flip it back to Peavy. This one is blown up and nearly intercepted. An incomplete pass may have been the best result there for Mercer. Isaiah Stahlberg is standing right there with the receiver to try to get it. It's a reverse pass. Here's the first piece of it. Jet sweep, reverse to Ty James, get it back to your quarterback, trying to get it back to Devron Harper out in space, but Isaiah Stahlberg, not fooled at all, stays home, gets their defense off the field. Tucker Large. Back to receive the punt for South Dakota State. Reese Griffith driving spiral that time to the 32 yard line and that's where the Jackrabbits will go to work with their first possession in this second half. Well I think we see more of the same coming out of half. This is the direction of the field where South Dakota State will have the wind at their back. Don't be surprised if you see some sort of play action, shot play. They've got Jackson Yankee out to the field. Well, you're going to get a healthy dose again of running the football. Isaiah Davis in the backfield now shifts over in Wildcat formation. It's Davis that takes the direct snap. Not a lot there on first down. 125 years of South Dakota State football. This is the first time they have ever had an undefeated regular season. It's been a long time since they lost a football game. I remember watching our hotel room for our game that night. They played Iowa to open the season a year ago, lost seven to three in a game that thought South Dakota State was gonna come away with a win there. After that loss to open the 2022 season, they have not lost since. 
three straight trips to at least the FCS semifinals. And they've been there in five of the last six years, of course, coming off of last year's national championship. Kronowski wisely slides safely 40 yard, 40 yard line. There is some debate as to whether or not Mark Gronowski is even the best athlete in his family. I mean, he's got a national championship to his credit. He was the offensive freshman of the year, his freshman season here at uh, South Dakota State. But his brother Ryan, who is 24 years old, is a Special Olympics athlete out of Illinois. He's originally from Naperville, Illinois. And in 2022, he was on Isaiah Davis across midfield and powers his way to the 48-yard line for a first down. But in 2022, Ryan was on the Illinois flag football team that went to Orlando, Florida and competed in the Special Olympics, and he won a gold medal. And one of the first people that he called was Mark's former head coach here at South Dakota State, Coach Stig. Awesome story. It was, it lit up telling that story to us. That was fantastic. It was, they talked about how that's Mark Gronowski. Everything he does is for his brother. Said his why is his brother Ryan. Gronowski flushed from the pocket and again slides. Short gain on first down. You know, one of the other, it's a little thing, but in the pocket when Gronowski gets pressure, watch how he keeps two hands on the football. So many young quarterbacks and guys, especially still playing in the college level, when they start to scramble, you see him just get it to that right hand, start running around trying to make a play. He keeps both hands on the football. He's savvy in the pocket, able to get back to the line of scrimmage and avoid a sack. Yeah, I think the Gronowski family has got kind of a mutual admiration society going with Mark and his sister Sarah, big fans of Ryan, and Ryan, both of their bigger biggest fans as well. Com complete to Isaiah Davis, third down coming up. Guy who's got his fingerprints all over this South Dakota State program, Coach Stick, John Stiegelmeyer. 26 years as the head coach, 12 FCS playoff appearances, and including each of the last 11 years. And how about capping it off, going out on top of the national championship? We've had it rolling here for quite some time, played in that spring national championship 2021 when Mark Gronowski tore his ACL, ultimately lost that one to Sam Houston State, but came back really just one year later, but technically two seasons later since they played that in the, the COVID spring season. Got a national championship last year. Third down and five on the ground. Isaiah Davis, he's going to turn it into a touchdown. Third rushing touchdown of the game for the senior from Joplin, Missouri, who came in with over 4,000 yards rushing, and he has added to that total today. We've talked so much today about his patience. Hey. This one, he didn't really need to be patient. One cut, get to the edge, and the rest of this is just speed to get to the end zone. Adds to his total in this incredible season that he's putting together at the running back spot. Multiple times today on third and five or more, we have seen South Dakota State go to the ground. I mean, so many times, third and five, third and seven, third and nine, teams are throwing it. Why do they have so much confidence in running it in third and long? Well, it's the confidence they have just in general on offense. Their offensive line is fantastic. It allows them to run the football effectively. Doesn't matter the situation. They come out of half, first possession, another big touchdown run from Isaiah Davis. South Dakota State in control, leading at 31-0 over Mercer with 9.56 to play. Another touchback. Hunter Dustman, the kicker for the Jackrabbits, and so Carter Peavy in the offense. Back out to try and get something going. School record for wins in a season at Mercer is 10. They did it back in 2013, but it was not against all Division I opponents. And so Mercer 
sitting on nine wins this season, arguably the most successful season in school history. And Drew Cronick, their head coach, talked to us about how excited he is about where the program is. One of the things I ask him, not much there on first down on the tunnel screen, was he, you think about SEC football players, for example, they're in the state of Georgia. Very aware of what's happening in the Big Ten and the ACC and the, the Pac-12, and I, I said, "Do your guys have an awareness of what's happening at the FCS level all over the country?" And he kind of perked up when he said that. He said they do now. He said, "I'm not sure they did, but as we have gotten to the point where we are a playoff team or we are knocking on the door, they are very aware of what's happening in the Missouri Valley Conference, in the CAA." And I thought that was an interesting way to kind of couch that and talk about the development of their program leading to more recognition of what's happening all over the country. Yeah, a good carry there from Devron Harper. I totally agree with, with all of that, Richard, and, and from what Coach told us, how they have built slowly over time, five wins during the COVID season, seven wins on back-to-back -back years where they were right on the edge of getting in the playoffs. Not only did they get in the playoffs this year, get a first-round win, now that next step, trying to get to where you're one of the national seeds, you're getting to host, and they're building, doing it the right way. And Coach Cronick really building a program here in Macon, Georgia. Third down and two. Wooten trying to make it happen on his own, and he just can't get away. Jason Freeman and Caleb Franson. It doesn't make the tackle, but Kate Tavrier, watch 94, right in the middle. That's what slows down and makes Al Wooten bounces to the outside, and then the rest of the defense rallying to the football. Looked like Colby or Tier, or Herder, excuse me. More physical defense from this South Dakota State front seven penetration into the backfield. Fourth down and five coming up. South Dakota State takes a timeout. 31 nothing. Jackrabbits in front. Thirty-one zip. South Dakota State in front. Jack Rabbits took the timeout before the punt, which is coming now on fourth down from Reese Griffin. Mercer offensively has had to play consecutive quarters into the wind after choosing to have the wind at their back after the opening toss. So good field position once again for the Jackrabbits. I'll be spotted at the 34-yard line. So much balance from this South Dakota State offense in the ball game today. Richard Cross, Taylor McCard with you. These are one of the things that we talked about earlier. What do you make of it? Pretty darn good. <laughs> Pretty darn good. Not taking or taking care of the football. No turnovers. That's been the piece that was critical for this. Mercer defense. First down efficiency maybe could have been a little bit better. Good first down scramble from Gronowski. And then the last one, the red zone trips. Felt like early in the game, we'll see South Dakota State get into the red zone. Have to settle for a field goal on that first possession. But really after that, capped off three touchdown drives. Been pretty good on third down. They'll, they'll go back and look back at this. Obviously be pleased, at least up to this point. The other thing that we don't have listed here is the defense on their side of the ball wanting to limit Mercer to five or less explosive plays. I think they've certainly done that to this point. Gronowski with time. He's taken a couple of shots down the field today. Has not been able to connect on one. He takes a big shot himself there. Has third down coming up. And you use the word balanced, Richard, and that is exactly what down the line 
whoever ultimately, if South Dakota State doesn't end up running this back and winning another national championship, if somebody were to knock them off, you would have to force South Dakota State to be one division. And at this point in the season, no one's been able to do it. It's been a balanced attack really on both sides. Bernowski's efficiency running the football well with Isaiah Davis. The first team that can win at the point of attack and try and win up front, slow down this offensive line's push, they'll have a chance against the Jackrabbits. Bernowski looking to go to the air, and that's a completion at midfield. Another catch for Jackson Yonke. 150 on the ground. One. 78 through the air. It's pretty balanced. And different coaches talk about what balance means to them. But if you're talking about success on the ground and success through the air, they've had that today. Just across the midfield stripe. Amar Johnson. Davis has carried a big load. He's carried it 16 times for 117 yards and three touchdowns. But Amar Johnson, they went to him early. That's his fourth carry in the game. Behind Amar Johnson, Angel Johnson as well. Sophomore from Irene, South Dakota. That would be the third back that they feature. He's got four touchdowns on the year as well. But Isaiah Davis, all of the things that we talked about that jump out on tape, his patience and vision, we, we've seen those on display throughout this game. The 12 straight FCS playoff appearances is the second longest streak in the country. This one tipped into the air, and it's intercepted. Ken Stanley comes down with it, the junior from Waycross, Georgia. With his second interception of the season, and he gets this one off the tip ball right at the line. And a defensive unit that has thrived off of taking the ball away. Took until late in the third quarter, but they finally create a turnover. A nice job by Christian Hansen. Get that hand up in the air. And a good reaction from Ken Stanley. Gronowski's trying to swap that ball to the ground. Stanley ends up coming down. The 24th takeaway on the season for this Mercer defense. And the 18th now in the last six games, including today. And so Carter PV in the offense with their best field position of the day by far. Certainly to start a drive. And PV goes to the air. And that one is intercepted. Going the other way, Jared DePriest trying to take it to the house. A defensive score. Peavy is down, a flag is down. And that ball was ruled an incomplete forward pass. Looked like so there was something on the ground that was picked up, not a flag. Okay. There's a lot going on here. Thought there was a flag. There is no penalty. But so much going on on this play. The ball gets batted. Look to us like this ends up in the hands of the breeze. Ball is hit. Oh, it okay. clearly bounces there. That's so, a good job. Good communication from his officiating crew. Graham Spaulding batted it down, the senior from Oviedo, Florida. And then Jared DePriest tried to sell it. PV gets outside the pocket, lobs it down the field, and it is... This time it's intercepted. Pulled down by Dallas Beatum. That is his eighth career interception. I understand it from Carter Peavy trying to make a play, but how about that play from Dallas Beatum? Trying to get it to his big tight end. Beatum, ball skills, high points it, foot in bounds, Jackrabbit's ball. Decided to play without us, and that's a big play for the offense. Amar Johnson for South Dakota State. Out to the 30. And a new quarterback in the game for South Dakota State as well. One of the advantages South Dakota State has had 
so many blowouts in, in games where it gets out of hand late. A lot of these guys in backup positions have had meaningful snaps going back to last season and this season. So Chase Mason enters the game with four minutes to play in the third quarter. He gives it once again to Johnson. And he's run out of bounds at the 32 yard line. If indeed the day is done for Mark Ranowski, Efficiency is the word that we used with him coming in. 11 of 16, 158 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Gronowski also ran it 11 times for 40 yards. Chase Mason, you see, 11 of 18 on the year, does not have a touchdown pass. He's not been picked off either. And he's going to take off on a quarterback draw, and he is dropped at the 35-yard line by Thomas once again. Marquez Thomas has played a good game today. Chase Mason, an athletic guy, ran for over a thousand yards. Yeah, he's has 55 total touchdowns. Transfer from Nebraska, the sophomore from Hurley, South Dakota. He's a baseball player. For Nebraska, good all-around athlete. Mason of the Jackrabbits offense facing third and four here. He gets to the outside, looking down the field, throws it back across his body, late and over the middle, trying to get it to Michael Morgan incomplete. Pass, incomplete pass and Morgan. Morgan. Time for a punt. And this is the first punt of the day for the South Dakota State offense. Devin Harper is back to return this punt. And he is dangerous as a punt returner, averaging almost 14 yards per punt return. He's got two that he's returned for touchdowns this year. Huntsman hits a good one with the wind in his back. And a fair catch is made at the 12-yard line. It's only Dustman's 21st punt of the year. <laughs> Not a lot of punts that go on here in Brookings. Their offense is on the field. Quite a bit. Credit Mercer getting a stop. Back to back possessions on the defensive side. Had a takeaway. Forced a punt. And now for Mercer, look, this is about, we'll see some of their young guys start to check in. But unless something miraculous happens here, Richard, and they end up dropping this game. This is all about trying to build and for your guys that will be here next year, trying to get good quality reps as they look to next season build on some of the success that they've had. 50 yard, uh, 51 yard punt from Dustman with no return. Peavy, lob shot down the right sideline and that ball is hauled in by Ty James. Peavy's pass is complete. Just a fade ball to the outside Passes to Ty James. And a good, accurate throw for Carter Peavy. Want to try and put that ball on the outside shoulder, let your receiver run underneath it. This will be a great angle vantage point. Throw into that space towards the sideline. A nice pitch and catch. That's the biggest offensive play of the game for Mercer. Harper in motion. They give it to Harper, trying to get to the outside. South Dakota State really did a good job stringing that out toward the sideline. Tucker Large, hometown local kids from Sioux Falls, just down the road. That was a guy that his defensive staff and head coach Jimmy Rogers both said that's the most underrated player on our defense. And he showed up in a big way on tape last week, or excuse me, two weeks ago in their last game of the season against Missouri State. Had a big impact here today as well. Sioux Falls about 45 miles from Brookings. The run on the ground, gonna bring up third down and three about down three. Ron Harper looks like he's down. Five, 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 five. 129 left in this third quarter. Harper, the senior from Conyers, Georgia. What the injury is, it hurts more when it's cold. Hope, it, hope he's all right. Senior playing in his last game. Exactly right, Richard, when it gets this cold. 
especially with this wind. Everything stings a little bit more. Over 4,300 all-purpose yards. That's first all-time. For his career, averaging almost five catches a game. Number one all-time there. 152 receptions. Really good player, Devin Harper. Yeah. He was a finalist for the Walter Payton Award a year ago. It was a unanimous first team all Southern Conference selection, preseason All American at the FCS level. Third down and three. This ball batted at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. Trying to get it to Ty James on a quick slant. It's one of the things, sorry Richard, we haven't seen a ton of today. It's a tip ball from Carter Peavy. Happened quite a few times a week ago versus Gardner Webb. Today mostly avoided. A good job. By South Dakota State, if you're not getting home, get those hands up. Try and get a paw on the ball. This one's going to go over Tucker Large's head and will be down at the 18 yard line with a minute four to play in this third quarter. This is the second consecutive year, the third time in the last four seasons that South Dakota State has been the number one overall seed. They hang on today. They will host Villanova here next week at Dana J. Dykehouse Stadium. Beautiful facility. We had a chance yesterday to see the indoor facility. And it's really a nice setup for this South Dakota State team. This pass from Mason is complete to Jackson Yonke. Eighth catch of the ball game for Yonke. He's got a touchdown. Jackson and Jaden, big days today. Guys that in their offseason had a chance to train with Adam Thielen, formerly of the Vikings. I think they're both guys, especially Jaden. There's a handful of guys we've already mentioned that'll get looks in the NFL. The Yankee twins, their ability to catch the ball, tight windows, yards after catch. Two other guys that I think will get a look at the next level. On the ground, Amar Johnson. Look at the speed in the open field, trying to outrun everybody. He's dropped from behind inside the 10-yard line. Big run there for Amar Johnson. Marquez Thomas ultimately made the tackle and he had to go a long way to get there. 24, Marquez Thompson, excuse me, Thomas, gets all the way up into the line. Watch the effort. Tell, look, this still means something to these guys, even down 31 to nothing. We go to the fourth quarter, South Dakota State in control, trying to advance in the FCS playoffs. This is the right side of the FCS championship bracket. Montana and Delaware coming up later tonight in Missoula. Furman a winner over Chattanooga 26 to seven. Montana State and North Dakota State second quarter score tied at seven. 45-28 Villanova winner over Youngstown State looking more and more like they will meet South Dakota State here in Brookings next week. Lamar Johnson on the ground once again. At the three yard line. South Dakota State leading at 31 to nothing, early fourth quarter. Trying to win their 26th consecutive game. 258 yards rushing today for the Jackrabbits. Led by Isaiah Davis and his 117 yards. Johnson 
If he gets into the end zone here, he will get to 100, but he will not on this play. There's about five white jerseys that were there to meet Amar Johnson in the hole. Stanley leading the way. Ton of effort here still from Mercer late. Keep Amar Johnson out of the end zone. He's done all the work. Had the 54-yard run a minute ago. He had decals on both sides of his helmet when he started the game. Shows you that a physical football game for Ken Stanley. Toss into the end zone incomplete. Trying to get it to Zach Hines, the tight end dragging across. Hines gets tangled up trying to come across on the right side. Gets clipped right there and stumbles. I think if Mason could have given ground just a little bit longer, buy some time. Instead, Jackrabbit settling for a field goal. Dustman has already made one field goal today. He is 14 of 19 on the year. 19 yard try splits the uprights and it's now 34 nothing. South Dakota State increases the lead. Four nothing South Dakota State leading it over Mercer South Dakota State on its way to win number 12 of the season and a matchup with Villanova here in Brookings next weekend alongside Taylor McHart Richard Cross thanks for being with us it's been a beautiful afternoon Sun has been out not a cloud in the sky but the wind has whipped since we got to the stadium. Not sure it's the best day to have your shoes off, but whatever works for you. <laughs> In fact, I have to have a holder on the kickoff this time. I mean, like I get the premise. I'm just not sure when it's 39. What feels like 30 outside. It's time you want to go barefoot. Taylor, put your shoe back on. Jeez. <laughs> I was just you. about to make that joke. Give me a little quicker. Return out to the 24. On the return for the Bears, number 10, Parker Rowe. Uh, shoes back on. I mean, I'm sure they do. But is that, does that stand when it's like zero here? It's snowing and windy. Are they still doing that? Taylor, the people. Here in the great state of South Dakota are tougher than you. Of they're, not worried, they're not worried about the, the temperature. People in the great state of Mississippi and Texas where we're from are also tougher than me. Carter Peavy still in the game at quarterback for Mercer. And off to the outside. Good hold there on first down out to the 30 yard line. Micah Bell into the game and gets the carry this time for the Bears. Last week, Mercer got its first ever FCS playoff win, 17 to seven over Gardner Webb. And regardless of the outcome here today, this year is absolutely a step forward for Mercer as a program in terms of what Drew Chronic is trying to build and make in Georgia. Maybe gets to the outside looking for a throwback, instead dumps it underneath. That's caught for a short game, maybe a yard. Waiting on Sam Albee, the tight end coming across. We've got a lineman down. I think that may be Riley Adcock. Sorry, Riley Adcock. Behind him, the Riley Bell. But Richard, you said it a second ago, and it's exactly right. This program, Drew Chronic, building in the right direction. Gotten this, this win total five years, a few years ago. Back-to-back -back years with seven wins where they didn't make the playoffs. 
take that step forward with an eight and three regular season, get a chance to host a first round playoff game against Gardner Webb, get their first playoff win. And now the next step, those two, if you take the Ole Miss loss out of it, two losses during the regular season, Furman and Chattanooga, those are both playoff teams. So that's that next step, right? Beat those teams that are now your peers that are going consistently to the FCS playoffs. down at two got to go across the 34 yard line that's a movement up front Riley Adcock goes out of the game actually moved over Eli Edwards I believe to the center spot excuse me that was Riley Bell they blame that on Eli Edwards it was the center that's checked into the game Richard freshman Riley Bell flinched so instead of third and two now third and seven increasing that movement which is a staple of this Mercer offense Peavy with a clean pocket floats this one down the field incomplete Trying to go to Scooter Risper. Jalen Lee in coverage. Back up corner spot. He's in now in place of Ishawn Gales. Good coverage on the back end. And so once again, Reese Griffith to punt. This time, though, with the wind at his back. Wobbly spiral and Marge will let this one roll. Takes a big Mercer bounce, rolls inside the 20, all the way down to the 15 yard line. Good punt that time. Aided by the roll for Reese Griffith and the Mercer special teams. 11.34 left in the fourth quarter. That is a sweet lid. 34 0. Jackrabbits in front of the Bears. Jackrabbit to bear met in the wild. The outcome be different than it is on the field today. <laughs> Jackrabbits pretty fast. Hard to catch. Great logo, by the way, for South Dakota State. The, the white helmets with the Jackrabbit on the side. That is a phenomenal look. This is a good uniform game. Both these it is. Look at that. How good is that? That's a fierce looking jackrabbit, too. Nothing's better than my rice owls. Come on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's all I got for you, man. 11 minutes to play. Chase Mason came into this game at the four minute mark of the third quarter. Looks as if he's going to go the rest of the way. Swing pass out of the backfield. Out to the 25 yard line, maybe just short of the 25. Griffin Wild getting his first touch, first action of the day. Excuse me, Wildy. Apologize to the Wildy family. Good first touch for the freshman, another local kid. Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Jefferson High School. By the way, if you're ever in Sioux Falls and you're looking for a place to eat, Crawford's in downtown, big time. Trying to go straight forward. They get the surge with the offensive line for the first down. That'll keep the clock moving here in the fourth quarter. South Dakota State keeping possession. And a good surge all the way out to the 29 yard line. Play's got a bunch of different names. Just calling it quarterback sneak is not good enough. It anymore. doesn't do it anymore. A lot of veterans on this team for South Dakota State. And sometimes it's hard when you look at a roster to figure out exactly where eligibility is because you've got red shirt years and medical red shirt years and the COVID year. One thing we know for sure is that Mark Gronowski 
if he wants it, has got two years of eligibility remaining. Two more left. It was a sophomore he just targeted there, Graham Goring. His first catch of the day, sophomore from Iowa City. Nine minutes to play. Lamar Johnson. You know, one of the things that also jumps out about this South Dakota State roster, we've talked a lot about the size up front. We've talked about the Yankee twins, their size as well. But these guys now getting their touches late in the game, sophomores and freshmen. Graham Goring, six foot three, 205 pounds. Griffin Wildey, 6'2", 190. This is a big physical football team, even out on the skill positions, they've got size. Look at the time of possession differential. South Dakota State has absolutely controlled this game. Good throw and catch, Devin Cole Jr. Ball comes out at the end, was he down? Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by Mercer. And so after a great run after the catch by Devin Cole, the ball comes out and that's a turnover. Great effort, looked like T.J. Moore tracking down. Devin Cole catches a slant over the middle. Good run after catch, gotta know. That's coming. Tracking you down, T.J. Moore, absolutely a fumble. Ball comes out clearly. Even with Mercer down big, we've seen Marquez Thomas tracking down the running back on the long run. T.J. Moore striking at the ball. Second turnover today that they've created. No quit in this Mercer Bears team. We're going to take a look at that previous play. With the break on the field, we'll take a timeout as well. 8-14 to play. South Dakota State leading at 34-0. Live. All right, the officials took another look at it. This was Devin Cole Jr. See, it was T.J. Moore that came in, punched that ball loose. It was moving as he was headed to the ground, so the call on the field stood as was called, and it is Mercer football here coming out of the timeout. Now for the Mercer offense, all about trying to get that zero off the board. Late in the game, Want to be able to get out of here, avoid a shutout, try and get some sort of points here. Something you can feel good about as this game in the last eight or so minutes. Parker Roble on the catch out to the 30 yard line. Roble's a guy, spent some time at the Air Force Prep Academy, transfers in and do a lot with him, move him around. You'll see him in the running back spot in short yardage situations. It's a guy that I think will continue to build around, add to his workload next season. Carter Peavy is 13 of 19 throwing the football today, but for just 62 yards. They just haven't been able to get anything down the field. Peavy working, trying to make something happen. And again, good coverage downfield by the Jackrabbits defense. Good pursuit. Savion Williamson in the game, that linebacker spot. He's spying Carter Peavy and watched number six, Williamson, trigger to the football. That's something that stands out regardless of who's in the game. Backups in the game now, starters in the first part of the game, doesn't matter. It's in this, te this full team, but on the defense specifically, rallying to the football, playing with violence and effort at all three levels. Driving spiral punt that again gets a big roll. 
Reese Griffith, when he's been punting this way, has taken advantage of the win and taken advantage of the roll. 6.05 to play. San Diego, South Dakota State in control. South Dakota State in control here in Brookings. Villanova, a winner over Youngstown State. They will meet South Dakota State next week. Albany over Richmond. You've got that Idaho and Southern Illinois coming up from the Kibbe Dome in Moscow later tonight. That game on ESPN2. On the right side of the bracket, Furman over Chattanooga. Montana State and North Dakota State in a battle. Tied at 14 apiece. On the ground, big run. This time it's Angel Johnson looking for the exclamation point. Angel Johnson to the house. Angel Johnson. How about that? The sophomore, Irene, South Dakota. A little bit of daylight, huge burst, and the rest of that was speed to the end zone for his fifth touchdown on the season. And look again, makes one man miss. Second one there, and the rest of this, this is just speed all the way to the end zone. Big time run from Angel Johnson. 80 yard touchdown run for Angel Johnson. 353 yards on the ground. Your drive summary, one play, 80 yards, 13 seconds. The extra point is good, and it's now 41-0 South Dakota State. Old running back room and on the action. Heard with Isaiah Davis. Mark Johnson's had a big day. Angel Johnson said, I want in on the action as well. Both Davis and Amar Johnson over 100 yards. Isaiah Davis, 16 carries for 117 and three touchdowns. One carry for 80 yards for Angel Johnson and a touchdown. Mar Johnson today with 11 from 107. This South Dakota State team going to be a handful for anybody they face in these FCS playoffs. If they win their next two games, they will then get a week off before the national championship game, which will once again be in Frisco, Texas. Trying to go back to back. Lost the season opener on the road in Iowa City a year ago. South Dakota State did. Seven to three. And they have not lost since. Trying to make it 26 straight wins. Told you earlier, riding their first ever undefeated regular season. That's in 125 years of football. It's the 14th all time postseason appearance, the 13th in the FCS playoffs. Short kick taken on the run and a big hit. Robel took a shot there from Brody Gormley, it looks like. Look at bang. Robel has to run up. I want to let that ball hit the ground and risk it being a fumble. You see 89, Brody Gormley flying into the frame. So 5.52 to play. Carter Peavy staying in this ball game. Didn't know if Mercer would perhaps go to a backup. They stick with Peavy though, and he throws an interception. It's picked off by Aiden Donnerman. Donovan, the sophomore from Hartford, Wisconsin, with his first interception of the year. Looks like the ball comes off the side of the hand for Carter Peavy and right in the lap of Dowderman. Easy, that's about as easy an interception as you'll find. Trying to get it to Ty James, and you're right. Looked like the ball just slipped coming out of his hand, wobbly the whole way. And Donovan. It's the interception in South Dakota State. The route is on here in Brookings. And John Bell will now get a chance at quarterback. He is also from Naperville, Illinois, Chicago suburb, same hometown as Mark Gronowski. Go to the 
ground and back to Angel Johnson. And this time, good penetration. And TJ Moore, I think, with the tackle. Number eight that got back there. Like maybe Solomon's Baru in there as well. Now, Angel Johnson, I guarantee you, he's thinking about getting to that 100 yard mark. Try and join Isaiah Davis and Angel Johnson. Excuse me, Amar Johnson. John Bell throwing the football is one of five on the year for six yards. This feels like it is handoff territory, though. Back-to-back okay, -back carries for no gain. Christian Hansen with the tackle there for Mercer. Inside five minutes to play in the fourth quarter at Dana J. Dykehouse Stadium. Smaller crowd today in this first home game of the playoffs. They anticipate that the crowds are going to get bigger as the playoffs go along. Four of the top six crowds in South Dakota State history have happened this season. And in the neighborhood of 19,000, four different times this year. Bell trying to get to the outside, and he's dropped from behind. Good pursuit that time by Isaac Prince, the red shirt freshman from Snellville, Georgia. Love that effort from Isaac Prince getting in on the action, tracking down the quarterback. I think as we get under four minutes here, Mercer still promise you that focus on the offensive side is Try and get some sort of points this last possession, trying to avoid a shutout. Visiting yesterday with the defensive coordinator for South Dakota State, Jesse Bobbitt. And he was talking about goals on the defensive side and how they wanted to accomplish their goals and it accomplished some of them as well. But he said, look, we wanted to give up 10 points a game this year. We haven't accomplished that. We're giving up 11 points per game this year. They can keep a shutout today. That will help the season average. That will help the average, certainly. Eleven point three points per game allowed this year by South Dakota State's defense. They're giving up less than 100 yards on the ground. 266 total yards a game. Also, just unreal numbers from this defensive unit. And today they've given up, prior to that play, 120 yards. 62 through the air, 58 on the ground. There's just so many guys on this team, both sides of the ball, that have played so much football for the Jackrabbits. You go back and look, back, I went and looked at the stat line three years ago. There are guys on this team that played in that game against Sam Houston State three years ago. So many of these players have stacked together multiple seasons, benefited some from the COVID year. There's veterans all over the field for Saint South Dakota State. PV able to run for the first down out across the 20. He's brought down at the 22 yard line. Two turnovers forced by the South Dakota State defense. We talked earlier, take a look at the bracket. South Dakota winning over Sacramento State. Halftime in Fargo with Montana State and North Dakota State tied at 14. Ball comes out. PV trying to cover it up. He's able to do so at the 18. Taylor, you ask. Yesterday, Jimmy Rogers about why there's such a concentration of success in this part of the country at the FCS level. And he said it's really pretty simple. He said, We are the FBS program in our state. There's no professional sports. We are the state school. And so, from a recruiting standpoint, got a lot of kids that are good players in South Dakota and the upper Midwest that they have been able to attract. And you see that with 
Montana and Montana State with South Dakota State with North Dakota State. Just done a really good job bringing guys in keeping them here and it matters it does and the piece that he didn't say that we'll say for him is they've done a fantastic job as a staff developing kids that were not highly recruited yeah. he mentioned that about the loyalty about how many kids that they have on their team that just had the one offer and they've stayed they don't hit the portal after they have success here traditionally and that matters that development getting kids in your program getting them to buy into your system and then have that effort year in and year out that is hard to do that's what being a program builder is all about. First down catch to Parker Roble, but that to me is what stands out year over year, not just at South Dakota State, but in this region, this success that comes from the Missouri Valley Conference and the teams that are in this region. I think a lot of these programs are doing a great job getting those recruits, getting kids that were not highly recruited, and then converting them. I don't think there's anybody you could argue that's done a better job of it than this staff at South Dakota State. PV rolling to his right, and that ball is nearly intercepted. Dayton McGoy thought that he had a pick. He could not haul it in. That would have been his first of the season, the senior from Elwood, Kansas. I think he's looking right back in the sun here. And it goes right through his hands. He's beside himself. Can't believe he didn't come away with the interception there. 22 seconds remaining. That's all that Stands between South Dakota State and a meeting with Villanova here in Brookings, South Dakota next weekend. On the ground this time, it's Micah Bell out across the 40 yard line and everybody is content that will do it. Jimmy Rogers coming out of the headset. Mercer appears to be okay with not running another play. And South Dakota State with a clinical win today over Mercer. Dominated in all three phases, physical on the offense and defensive line. And they came out and did exactly what we have come to know from them, run the football well, play solid defense on the back end. And it's another big win in the postseason for this Jackrabbits program. 26 straight wins now for South Dakota State. And the 19th consecutive win here at Dykow Stadium. So South Dakota and uh, South Dakota State advances. They will meet Villanova, the eight overall seed. Next weekend here in Brookings, Albany will take on either Idaho or Southern Illinois in a quarterfinal matchup. That Idaho-Southern Illinois matchup coming up tonight, 8 o'clock Mountain Time on ESPN2. So that is our left side of the bracket. Take a look at the right side as well. Montana and Delaware will get started at 9 o'clock Eastern time tonight. Earlier today, Furman over Chattanooga. Still at the half, Montana State and North Dakota State. And earlier today, South Dakota. Well, that one's still going on in the fourth quarter with a big lead over Sacramento State. An outstanding win today for the South Dakota State Jackrabbits, the number one overall seed. They've been the number one team wire to wire in the polls all season long. A phenomenal performance by them. And a big showdown next week as well, a matchup against Villanova, who was ranked as well. The eighth seed should be a fantastic atmosphere. Forecast weather plays a big factor in these games in South Dakota. Weather, looking forward to next week. Looks a lot like it was today, sunny and, and a pretty good weather that they don't typically get here in South Dakota. But that's going to be a big time matchup against Villanova next week. And, the recipe will be the same. Run the football well, take care of the football, be physical on the defensive line. It's exactly what we saw today. It's a recipe that they take week in and week out. They get to line up and sing with the band here in Brookings. They've been doing that a lot over the last few years after wins. A great facility, a great home field advantage for South Dakota State. And in just a moment, we're going to get a chance to visit with Jimmy Rogers in his first season as head coach, undefeated as a head coach, and his team played 
exceptionally well today in the victory over Mercer. Well, Jimmy Rogers joins us from the field. We appreciate uh, his time, Coach. Congratulations. A, a dominant performance all the way around, both sides of the ball today for your football team. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, came out, we executed, we played fast and defensively. I don't know if it gets much better. Coach, running the football, it looked like it, anybody that was in the game, Isaiah, Angel, Amar, they all ran the ball well. Just how important is it to have a running back room that's that deep behind Isaiah? Yeah, I think it's special. I mean, we got a great, great group of uh, guys, and I think it all starts up front. Um, doesn't matter who we put in at O line; the expectation's not going to change. And able to execute and get guys in and stay fresh. And um, this is a great football team, and we got to stay healthy to accomplish our end goal. And that end goal is to get back to the national championship game and win another one. But coach, you have talked to us yesterday about your team not getting too wrapped up in that, kind of staying in the moment. How have you been able to get them to do that as they have continued to have success? Yeah, we talk about uh, playing your last play and, and being committed to your teammate. And we don't talk about records or, or anything. There's always ways to get better, you know, and uh, I felt like at times we could have executed it a little better, but um, for the most part, we did what we were supposed to do, and I'm excited for this group, but uh, this is just one of many for us, and, and we need to be locked in, and we got a tough one next week. Hey, you just pitched a shutout in the playoffs. You can smile. This is how I look. <laughs> coach, That's congratulations. Look. Appreciate Thanks for your time. Thanks, Thank you, Coach. That's Jimmy Rogers, head coach at South Dakota State. His team gets the win 41 to nothing. A chilly but beautiful Saturday afternoon in Brookings, South Dakota. For my partner, Taylor McCarg, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Richard Cross. South Dakota State still undefeated, rolling on, trying to make it back-to-back -back national championships.